Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Break the Stigma. We're here with Ryan today, um, and he's going to share his unique story and journey with mental health. And I'm super excited to just get right into it. Uh, before we dive into your journey, Ryan, if you could just share a little bit about what you do and who you are. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. Um, so my name is Ryan Zadrazil, and I work in sales. I'm the co-founder of a company called Pause, but more importantly, I'm an advocate for mental health. I'm very involved with um, Uncrushed, which is a mental health sales community created by Tim Clark, as well as NAMI. I do some volunteering there. So I'm very passionate about volunteering my time in addition to my professional life. So those are kind of where my sales is my passion, but I also love helping out and volunteering. Wonderful. I, I mean, we all benefit from your advocacy and mental health. Can you explain a little bit more about what um, Crush is? Yeah, so um, Tim Clark, I believe he created it more towards the sobriety size of things, but mm -hmm. it's become a community for mental health. We're actually doing a, the state of mental health and sales survey, I believe it's called right now. So we're oh. gathering information from different salespeople to see what they're experiencing with their mental health, you know, throughout their career uh, this year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very cool. That's awesome. Um, yeah, it sounds like you're really involved in the mental health community, and I'm glad you're continuing that work with us today on Break the Stigma. And so with that, can you share a little bit about your mental health journey and what that's looked like for you? Definitely. So I... I didn't realize I was having mental health issues, but when I was 13, it was definitely things. I was hospitalized a few times and I started taking medication, but it didn't seem to do the trick. Mm -hmm. And I went undiagnosed from the age of 13 to 17, where they then diagnosed me with bipolar disorder. Mm -hmm. And I really didn't do a lot on the mental health spectrum of things for a long time. I took my medicine but I didn't practice things like self-care and a regulated sleep schedule and all the things that are really important with bipolar disorder. Mm -hmm. So I had a major manic episode at the age of 28, which led to me needing to be hospitalized again. And I had to get a new job because of the events. It's not at work, but just because of the episode and I was looking for a new job at the time. Mm -hmm. But after that, I really realized like I needed a support network. I needed to prioritize self-care. I need to create a routine for myself to keep myself healthy. And all those kind of components have seemed to come together from the age of 28 to now 33, and things are going a lot better. I've been taking the same medication for the past five years. Like it's just been, it's been a nice experience, not without so much like uncertainty um, before when they couldn't find the right medication fit and they didn't really know the diagnosis. So it's nice that in my 30s, things are a little bit more stable. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm, I'm really glad that you found that stability um, later in your life. What was it like during that gap um, between kind of like 17 and 28 for you? What, what were you experiencing during those years, if you don't mind me asking? Yeah, so very erratic mood swings, I think. I'd get cranky beyond the like normal cranky level. Mm -hmm. And um just like trying to figure out who I was too. You know, in your early 20s, you're trying to figure out who you are. And I really didn't understand who I was. Mm -hmm. I went to college a lot and didn't really pursue the degrees I got because the level of interest wasn't there, which is kind of a blessing in disguise because then I found sales yeah. and everything kind of changed. Mm -hmm. But before that, I felt like a lack of purpose, I guess, or a lack of understanding of who I was for that mm -hmm. time period. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that absolutely makes sense. What was it for you that helped you find yourself per se, um, moving into your thirties? Like what, what was most helpful for you during that journey in finding your identity? And if that includes your mental health, if that includes your diagnoses or what does that look like for you? Professional and personal stability. Like, I feel like things became a lot more consistent Obviously, it's a little different present day. I'm working on a startup and there's a lot of uncertainty with the startup company, but I'm able to manage the stress levels. I'm able to manage relationships with people. It's not like I, I go days without sleeping. It's very consistent. And I think that's what's made the biggest difference is just 
having that stability there, having a support network, having medications that are functioning properly. Like it's not one particular thing, but it's a combination of all those things. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that completely makes sense. It's kind of like testing the waters, seeing what works for you and what doesn't. In terms of the self-care aspect, what have you found most helpful for your journey? Yeah, routine is a big part of it. Like waking up at the same time in the morning and, you know, taking a shower, listening to music, doing the things that get set the tone for the day versus mm -hmm. just um, waking up and hopping on the computer and starting to answer. I, I'm guilty of it too sometimes, but mm -hmm. like, I try to avoid the first hour. Like that's the power hour, trying to get ready for the day. Mm -hmm. um, walking helps me a lot. I walk with my dad or I walk by myself and listen to music. So it's just a nice, like, consistent thing that happens every day. And I, I really value that time, either with music or my father. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, so I feel like that's so important, but also it's easier said than done sometimes. So really, like, hats off to you um, for finding that consistency and that routine and really sticking with it and changing your life with that. Um, that's really inspiring. Um, so we're going to switch a little bit into your, your journey in terms of mental stigma um, or stigma around mental health. Um, are there times during like from 13 to 33, are there times that you've experienced stigma about your mental health? Oh, yeah. So high school was really hard because that was that time period where they didn't really have a diagnosis and it was just try this medication. Okay. It doesn't work. Let's up the dosage. Doesn't work. Let's try this medication. And it was very frustrating. And I don't think at that time there was as much awareness around mental health in the K through 12 system here in the States. Mm -hmm. So I feel like even before that, like I didn't really know how to communicate to my parents or other people what I was experiencing because mm -hmm. I didn't know what it was. Mm -hmm. So that, that was one of the biggest challenges with the, the stigma, I think. And I, I do truly believe that there's less of a stigma than there was mm -hmm. when I was in high school and grade school, but it's still there. It's still present. Mm -hmm. And I think there needs to be a lot more education around mental health for like, especially grade school, because you talk about puberty and physical changes, but there's very little talk about mental health in the grade school system when I was going through it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's such a good point. I never thought about that. And we talk about those physical changes, but not really about how your brain's evolving during that time, which is very significant all the way through, I mean, all the way through your 20s and with life experience and all of that. That's a really good point. What did you find most helpful in um, opening up that conversation with your parents, with your friends uh, at that young age? It's a good question. Um, I think what I tried to do to open up the conversation was even after the diagnosis at age 17, I didn't do a very good job of communicating things. And there was a, a very significant episode I had at the age of like 24. I was taking very good care of my physical fitness, but mm -hmm. mentally I was not doing well. And I didn't communicate that, um, mm -hmm. to my parents, friends, or anybody. I was actually running marathons and like, I just... I just wasn't very cognizant of what was going on mentally. Like I was in such good physical shape. I forgot about, you know, the mental aspect of things. So I don't think until like 28 when I had another episode was when I really realized how important it was to communicate these things to people and have resources like going to group therapy or whatever it might be. Like all these things are important and it's not one thing that's going to solve the issue it's all those things combined on a consistent basis. Yeah, yeah, that's completely fair. Do you remember how you approached that first conversation? Because I feel that for many people, that first conversation is really, really difficult, but also really, really important. Do you remember what that was like for you? I don't specifically remember that first conversation. I do remember being in the hospitalized and I was put on a pretty high dose of a drug called Haldol. And it really like messed things up for a while. And that was the step back that I realized I had to have that conversation with the parents and let them know what was going on. Obviously they had an idea of what was going on based on 
what was happening, but I had to tell them like, we need to, we need to put like a plan together. Like, I think it was a, it was called like a rap plan. It was a wellness. I can't remember what it stands for, but I put it together just so I knew all the different resources I had available and what to do when things weren't going well, having a plan in place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I mean, good for you for making that plan and also getting through that and reaching out for help um, during that time. Do do you have, if you were talking to your younger self at that time or any people who are going through maybe a similar circumstance, do you have any advice as to that you would give yourself that you would maybe change about that or um, to anyone out there who is experiencing perhaps those difficult times? Yeah, so being open about it is important, but it's more important to be open with the people you trust. I know you can tell. I, I think I may have like used the bipolar when I was diagnosed as an excuse sometimes for my actions, mm. which maybe it contributed to it but I could have always just communicated what was going on before something happened with the people I love and trust. So I, I think that would be the big piece of advice. You don't have to be open about it to everybody. You don't have to be Ryan and like share all this, but just be open with the people you feel comfortable and trust uh, to share it with. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, Absolutely. And I, I, I mean, the goal of this podcast is to hopefully empower people to do that. Um, and you sharing your story and um, being vulnerable on here is inspiring people to pursue that. So um, again, thank you for sharing those moments and um, your story and vulnerability. Now we're going to switch a little bit into how we can break the stigma a little bit more. So thinking about what we can all do in our everyday actions as people walking this earth, what do you think we can all do? on every day to break that well we just had mental health awareness month and i'm a big fan but it (laughs) mental health matters beyond me i I think it's a big thing to create awareness and it's important but more importantly i think there's a difference between raising awareness and educating people like Mm -hmm. you can tell someone something but that doesn't mean they're going to process it and use it in the future where it especially like i said with at a young age little mental health awareness here in the United States as far as uh, grade school, even through senior year of high school. And Mm -hmm. then you go to college and there's counseling centers everywhere. Mm -hmm. And there's counselors that are accessible depending on the size of your school. But I I feel like there needs to be more of that, like at a younger age. So when we're changing as a human being, not only physically, like there's mental changes as well. And we need to be prepared to address those based Mm -hmm. on our experiences Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. absolutely yeah education is such a big (laughs) it like an important part of this um and I'm really glad you brought up that distinction between raising awareness versus educating because yeah we can do all the awareness in the world but if people aren't processing that and hearing that and learning from that um it it doesn't really do much (laughs) 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 Um, yeah so yeah thank you for sharing your thoughts on that Um, I really don't know if I have any other questions for you do you have anything else to add about your journey about stigma um, your thoughts about anything else (laughs) no thoughts but if if you listen to this episode and you want to talk more or share your story or just talk chat like feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn I spend a lot of time there and it's always great to meet new people and I hope sharing my story uh, makes an impact on someone else's life. I have no doubt that it will. Um, yeah, you've, you've had an incredible experience and really made it through. I mean, look at you now. Um, so yeah, it's an inspiring story. Thank you so much for sharing. Uh, yeah, so, yeah of course oh my gosh um, it's my pleasure uh, so yeah thank you so much and um, thank you everyone for listening on Break the Stigma